listening to the Mark Bradford Alchemy for Life podcast. Well, the choice is yours. Well, hey there. Long time no see. This is our 149th episode. I say our because quite literally, without you, there's no podcast. I mean that. It sounds cliche. It sounds cliche, but that's why there have not been episodes for the last few weeks. As much as I enjoy my voice, my humor, my unique take on things, I don't enjoy recording this for myself. There's got to be a you out there to balance the equation. A very small percentage of people who publish, whether it be social media or books or a combination thereof, actually reach a large audience. I'm not in that small percentage. Rather, I'm in the large majority who create and publish and have a small audience. The small audience happens also to be mostly silent. So, you can imagine the work that goes into creating an episode. It includes creating a topic. This isn't an issue of what everyone's talking about or what has annoyed me for the last week. Instead, this is thoroughly thought out, and I consider what uniquely I can explain that will help you to give you some sort of edge. Researching a topic. Yes, topics are actually researched. With searches, reading, personal reflection, and a combination of those things. Distilling. This is the most important step for me. I need to distill the issue into digestible bites that you can eat in about 10 minutes. Delicious. I'd like to think I'm fairly unique on this one. Go, you know, like go read a 300 page self help book and see what I mean when you come away with maybe a bullet from that whole book. This list I'm making for you right now, which is also in the article, is a perfect example of distilling, recording, and designing. The episode is recorded and massaged for audio. The article's written, and this varies depending on the subject. For example, this one has a very complete episode article. And then a graphic is designed for each episode. Promoting and connecting. I post to Facebook, Instagram, under two accounts, depending on the subject matter. I have one for Alchemy for Life and one for me personally. And if I talk about a book, I post on both. I also post on Twitter and LinkedIn. The podcast is then distributed to Apple, Google, Spotify, everywhere you can consume a podcast. You can even ask your Echo to play this. Measuring and feedback. I monitor where the podcast places in various markets on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc. It's this last bullet point that has brought me to the crossroads. The feedback. Well maybe, or lack thereof. See, there really is none. Well, none is sort of harsh. There are a few individuals that have let me know that an episode made them think, which is huge praise and something I take to heart. And there are guests that have told me that they've actually had a good time talking. Scott Adams actually said I was really good at this and that my questions were unusually insightful. John McAfee said I was a smart guy. You know, there's more, but you get the point. That's very meaningful for me to know that people I'm interviewing are actually enjoying being interviewed and actually feel that they're being heard instead of somebody going through just a list of things to ask them. And that's always been a huge priority with me in interviewing people. But the problem is that if my audience is not growing and the relatively small audience is not providing feedback, good or bad, then the motivation to continue, nay, the actual logic of continuing, is in question. I've had no feedback on the fact that there were no episodes in January. Point in fact. I disappeared for a month. No one said a word. See, I've created an entire library. This podcast of, so far, 150-ish episodes is an entire library of useful information, and I've organized it as such. It's ways to look at things and simple things you can do to improve the quality of your life, all for free. 
it's not an overstatement to say that it actually does improve the quality of your life. I mean, the things that are mentioned, the things that I discuss with you, are things that I've gone through myself. They're things that I've tested. They're things that I've used and observed. Things I've written down. Things I've actually talked about in talks. Things that, well, things that are in the book that I produced. The Alchemy for Life Formulas for Success. There's a, there are actually worksheets in there that you can see what we're talking about here. I mean, some would say this really is the trifecta of usefulness. I mean, there are those that urge those who write to, hey, get a podcast. There are those that urge speakers and coaches to, hey, write a book. And there are those that urge authors to, you know what, maybe you should consider speaking or like starting a podcast. Well, I'm doing all three. Each element supports the other. You can sign up for my coaching because you like what I say here and you want me to distill something for you. Imagine filling out my balance sheet and going, oh, well, that's where my energy is going. No wonder I'm tired or, oh, wow, I can't start this hobby. I don't make time for it. And I can't make time for it because of the way that I'm running this particular part of my life. You can listen to the podcast and decide that you want a workbook and then go buy my coaching book. Or you can hire me to coach you and then decide you'd like me to share this wisdom with your group and have me speak at your event. All the items connect to each other. But what then? I mean, should I keep doing this if there's no feedback? I mean, to be clear, I'm not conscruing success and popularity with interaction. The lack of growth of the audience is a separate thing. Or maybe it isn't. After all, if I'm doing something wrong that prevents the audience from growing, or you from sharing, then I would never know it, since there's no feedback to tell me that. By the same token, I wouldn't know to focus more on a subject, or method, or even format, if no one reaches out to me to let me know. Do I know you enjoy interviews more than the short single podcasts? No, I don't. Do I know if you appreciate the rather tight 10 minute window I force myself to stay within? No. <laughs> so we're on episode 149. It's up to you if episode 150 is a new beginning with feedback or a goodbye. You decide.